Hello everyone, welcome back to The Only Business Podcast. This is now our episode three. So we're here to talk about networking. That's our business. We're also here, most importantly today, to talk about the biggest change that's happened in networking. Um, most specifically, why networking is gonna now have to change forever. If you're a member of Only, you might have already seen our announcement, what we're doing in terms of um, fully embracing blended networking, given the context that we're in. We're gonna have a good chat about that with the um, co-hosts here today. And on that note, hello to Andy, hello to Kelly. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, James. Good to see you both. Um, let's just do s- some brief intros. So um, can we start with yourself, Kelly? Yeah. Tell yeah. us who you are. Thank you, James. So I'm Kelly West. I am one of the founders of Only Networking along with James. We are husband and wife. We're business partners um, and we set up Only back in January 2018. We're going to give a bit more background on that as we walk up to this. But Andy, who are you, please? I'm just some random guy who decided to come along and jump on this podcast. <laughs> very nice space that you've yes, got here. Thank you very much. So, um, yes, I'm Andy. Um, my company is Pulse8 and I help James and Kelly put this podcast together videography and podcast is what I do. So I'm very excited about this third episode. I feel like I'm co-hosting this. You are co-hosting Well, I am co-host, but I feel like I'm leading this. I feel like I'm interviewing you both because you're opposite of me. Well, you're not going to be because I'm the journalist. No, you're, you're, so get back in your box. You're going to lead it. Yeah. Yeah. He'll give you a couple of minutes and then he'll pull it back. Yeah. <laughs> so this is obviously a massive topic for us. You know, we're a networking business and we've essentially said the future of networking or the formal bit of networking, either meetings, we've moved them online. Most business networking has been built around this face-to-face concept. We've said, yeah, as much as we love that, and we built only on going to really nice venues because Kelly's a snob and likes to go to nice places. But <laughs> oh, that, defend yourself. Oh, not well. I've, I don't think you're a snob, <laughs> Kelly. Who doesn't want to go to nice places? Yeah. But what we've basically said is, well, we can't guarantee that, can we? Today and in future, there is a massive question mark over the viability of going to these regular face-to-face meetings. Therefore, And what we've discovered in the interim period is how effective online networking is. If you get it right, there's been a learning curve for all of us, isn't there? But um, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about that. But um, we also wanted to take this opportunity as the third ever podcast to kind of give a bit of background to Only, because who are these people? Why are you here? Um, so we're going to give you a little update on really what Only was, and that walks us into what it's now become. So I'm going to hand over to you, Kelly, because mm. you had something to do with it. I What's this Only thing all about? Uh, well... Only our, our biggest story for um, for ourselves from networking is that we met at networking. So, of course, networking is incredibly important to us, not just from a business perspective, but also personally. Um, we were members of various different networking groups. We attended lots of, as a visitor and we always come away thinking, yeah, it was good. Really enjoy it, throw myself into it, love the people I'm mixing with, but there was just something missing for us. So we decided that we would put together a networking meeting that we wanted to attend. Because for us, it was as much about the experience of building a relationship with somebody as it was just passing a piece of paper or a bit of a referral. So we decided that within only, it was going to be more about that business relationship. So build the relationship first. And we say it all the time, people by people. And how can you do that if you're just forced into a room with somebody and you're expected to refer from that per- to that person from day one? With us, it's about getting to know that person. So it's a longer burn. Of course it is, because you're not going to get to know me in an hour and a half session. It's going to take your effort to get to know me outside of a meeting or to make contact with me or to use my services at a later date. But if you build that relationship, of course the business is going to come. It was an unknown quantity, wasn't it? And there was a few things that we introduced in the early days you know, if you're not familiar with business networking traditionally, you lock out your competitor so there can only be one web designer, one copywriter. That equally makes it very difficult for somebody like me at the time, I was graphic design, mm. made it very difficult to get in with networking groups and it restricted the growth of my business because of that. So yeah, you lock out a competitor, but now somebody's losing out at the same time. Yeah. Well, we, Incredibly we, unfair. Yeah. We literally wouldn't be sat here today if it wasn't for the fact that we didn't have that rule within only because we met, we were sensibly doing the same thing. You're a web designer. You know, I've been to networking groups where you can only have one person that's in the marketing sphere. Wow, good luck with that. Because there's so many disciplines within marketing, isn't there? We wouldn't have met, we wouldn't have done this stuff. We've not only have we worked together, we've also referred work between each other because 
your version of building websites is completely different to ours, yeah. as is completely if you different think about to the it, person down the road. It's an absolutely archaic way of doing business. It's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's like saying, I have a coffee shop, but somebody else who owns a coffee shop can't walk in, just in case they steal some ideas. It's being realistic, isn't it? Oh, I'll lock out my competitor. Good luck with that in 2020, because the internet happened. Mm. <laughs> I think there was a time and a place for that. And this isn't to run down other networking groups, because we're just confident in the way that we do it. You know, one of the other things we had from day one is that let's remove all of the things that get in the way of running a business. Because a lot of the networking activity that we've done, that becomes a job into itself. And you should prioritize networking as an activity. It isn't something you can just turn up and get results from it. But are those rules benefiting me? Are they making me a better networker? Or are they kind of feeding the protocols of the networking group? So we said, we're not going to have any of that. We're just going to let the relationships come to the fore and let people get to know one another. Um, so we're not a referral network. No, we're not. But by building those relationships, of course, that's going to happen. It happens mm. naturally because if you like somebody, of course, you're going to want to pass business to them. And I think it's taking a long time, we're nearly two and a half years old now. And I think the amount of business that we see passing within the last year is incredible because those relationships are being made. You know, we, we're at higher numbers of members, particularly in lockdown. People have been able to get to meetings that they wouldn't have got to naturally because of the geographical yeah. limitations so that spread is, is much bigger and like we've just coined the phrase that we are the network for people who like people yeah so if you don't like people don't bother really because there's yeah. no safety that makes net. business difficult if you don't like people it does. unless you're selling a product online you don't like that face to face obviously let's just finish that story so well, this was our plan in the beginning launch a new way of networking based on the way we wanted to do it how quickly did it evolve Oh, massively. We we had a guinea pig group in Winchester in the December before we launched. So that was December 2017. We had 18 people attend and 17 joined. So we thought, wow, God, you know, this has got to be something here. Let's go with it. When we came to March, so just before lockdown, we had 22 face-to-face -face groups. And we already had online networking, but it was hard to get people to understand the value of it because they didn't have to do it. Mm. They were, mm. You know, they could go to a meeting, so they, they chose to do that. Um, the online version of that will be coming up to two years old um, this August. Going into lockdown, 22 groups, just short of 200 members. Of course, that was a really tough time for us, and we did see it steady off, and it wasn't growing as quickly as it was pre-lockdown at probably five members a week but that that would be for all businesses all businesses yeah. every, every business felt that yeah. that pinch you're just grateful that you held on to what you've got absolutely you know and for us it was about okay it doesn't matter if we don't get any bigger how can we keep that community going because the culture of the business the vision for what we had to go forward was just so incredibly important to us and that was something that we had from day one um we were lucky, as you said, 18 months before that, we'd started doing online networking. And when we started it, the idea was very much, oh, well, wouldn't it be cool to do global networking? You can sell websites and podcast services anywhere in the world. We built a website. Another part of our story is that we got married in New York and the guy that married us, we built his website um, off the back of a conversation on our wedding day. So <laughs> there's a great networking story there. But the idea was we thought that would be the way that it would work, that people are trying to sell overseas. But what we found in that interim period, two things we did was one, we perfected the format of online networking. So when we had to shift online, we already knew what needed mm. to be adapted, yep. what we could leave as it was and what needed to change. Um, and we also had that buy-in from certain people. but. What did it look like to you when you started doing online networking? That's a good question. And to be honest, I was just grateful I could carry on networking. And I was relatively new, it sounds really silly, relatively new to um, videos online on Zoom. I'd only got onto Zoom in February. So I was still a bit apprehensive, had experienced a couple of online, online networking through yourself. But I, from my point of view as a business, I was just, super grateful for that that would carry on obviously you don't have like when you turn up you've got to turn up on time and you don't have that sort of like chance at the start to mingle and that comes into more of the technical side of things you don't want everybody's voice especially if you've got 20 yeah. people but to me i thought brilliant and actual fact it was after i think one or two meetings did i realize just how much time that's already saving my business mm. 
Okay, granted, I have been a member of only for a year and a half, built up some good um, contacts and friendships. So it was like I could see familiar people. If I wasn't a member and I suddenly had to look for an online group, I would have probably been a bit nervous about it. What's what's it about? How does it work? Mm. I'm going to have 25 people staring at me. In actual yeah. fact, people don't stare at each other. You have a look around. But from my experience, it was definitely, I, I, I'm quite a positive person. I'm a half full glass, always seeing that side of things. If I thought, if I was half half empty glass, it would have been very much, um, Oh, it's not going to be the same. I'm not going to have the food I like. I'm not going to go to the lovely menus. Yes, that is an aspect of networking, especially with the, the lovely venues mm-hmm. we were at. But it's I've picked up business through online networking. It's been, how long have we been doing it now? Whew. Four, four months. months four, four months, yeah. Four months. Yeah. Four months. The, only, the only downside is from a psychological point of view is pinpointing when you've met somebody. Yes. Because it's all on, a, all on a laptop or on your computer. Yeah. And your memory recall, and I think it's just human conditioning, isn't so great. In the real world, I'd be like, yes, I met you at the IV. Yeah. I can, for me, obviously being a visual person, I can pinpoint you and I can recall our conversation. Mm. So well, you've I'll, got a better memory than me because I wouldn't remember it anyway. <laughs> would you not? <laughs> no. Would you not? I just Jarvis. know you, don't I? <laughs> yes. But I, I would say, you know, that's again just going to come down to adapting to online and this is where having a one-to-one afterwards and connecting with those people online on linkedin facebook or whatever means cementing the relationship cementing you're absolutely right it's imperative to online networking even more Mm. than the real world we bang that drum for a long time haven't we and you'll remember back in the meetings when we used to say to people if you're just going to come to this group state your case take the sheet away and do nothing you will get nothing from it And we used to say, didn't we, make sure you spend the time, go on to LinkedIn, connect with people, show interest in them, because otherwise, why do you think they're going to show interest with you? Mm. What we've learned in that four months, you know, we knew the format of online networking could work. Um, If you've not experienced, we actually do more. You know, we've actually got space for a a breakout room. So you actually get an impromptu one-to-one with someone in the room. We didn't have that before. We've gone from a two-hour meeting to an hour and a half that's got more content in it. So we worked out that, yeah, this can work really well as long as you do the follow-up stuff. Yeah, well, you, well, you, you hit a nail on the head there. It is those breakout sessions. So they're randomly generated. So you, you don't know who you're going to get. It's kind of exciting because you get whisked off and then suddenly you're in front of somebody you may know or may not know. But that's a prime opportunity. And it would be no, that would be no different in the real world going over to I know, a coffee-making facility, women in networking, getting yeah. a coffee, and that person turns up next to you. Yeah. You end up in at least a 10-minute conversation. Yeah, you do. So the breakout sessions is really the equivalent of meeting at the, what's it, the term, the, the water thing? Around the water cooler. At the water cooler. The old yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we, you know, that that's part of what we've evolved in terms of online networking. Because that was so successful, we brought in only one, two, three. So... That's an hour of one-to-ones where you just literally have three one-to-ones in an hour with someone from across the network. We never would have done that no. in the in the face-to-face networking but there, sphere. But there's, there's a number of things which play to the advantage of when everybody went into lockdown, it's like, how are we going to communicate and see friends and family? We all turned to videos, you know, um, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, to see our loved ones. Mm. So we all suddenly became very adapted do videos online and talk to people with video online. So when when you people wouldn't have accepted if you if we didn't have lockdown, let's take that away, and you announce that one of your networks, right, we're gonna launch an online Zoom, one, two, three it's called, and you have 15 minutes each. Would you have had as much uptake? It's debatable. Probably. Well we know we yeah, wouldn't we because wouldn't we done. had two years of only online Absolutely yeah. legacy. Yeah. And it's probably you know, remember, you know, when we set that up, we had people in the US, various different states, Dubai, Spain, across the, the globe. And we were like, but that, this is brilliant. We can have a global business. And it was very quick that we realised, hang on, let's dial that down. Let's remove those people again, mm-hmm. particularly if they're in an awkward time zone, because we were ending up doing a meeting at four o'clock because one of our members was in the States and it was eight o'clock in the morning. So we could just didn't about, work for anyone, did you know, it? it didn't really work for anyone. Yeah, it yeah. didn't. And, and so to dial it back and go, well, hang on, we're not quite ready, which is why it took us so long. But I think the point is we do know this now and, and people do adapt. And actually 
okay, we're 200 odd members at the moment. If those guys only tell one or two other people, we are growing very quickly. And Absolutely. to get that experience yeah. out there mm. is not going to take that long. Well, and it's also the localised networking. We always, as I said in the beginning, you know, oh, well, we can sell to people in New York. Well, what about the people that live a county away yeah. that you don't meet in networking terms? What about one end of the county to the other? Mm. You know, we started off in Winchester, Hampshire, and then we've gone down to Paul and North Hampshire, and those people don't meet. And I think that's been another kind of revelation, isn't it? So the evolution of online mm -hmm. networking and us arriving at this decision to do blended networking, yeah. and it's probably worth stating, if you haven't seen the website or any of the announcements, that the way we're doing it now, all of our meetings are online. So your core networking meeting that you would traditionally have gone to and met people is taking place online. And we'll go into the details of why that works. And then what's what we're left with is Yes, we're aware that people still want to meet in person. So we do something called Only Experiences and they are regional meetings that take place each month at different times, but they're optional. Because what we realised is that this model does work, online networking does work, and that's the bit that we can safeguard your networking life, your networking platform. We can always deliver that unless the internet explodes, which uh, I think we're, please we're, don't we're, have we're, the internet. <laughs> we're going back to carrier pigeon. That'd be, <laughs> yeah. let, let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole because that would no. be quite scary for all of us. Um, but as, as you mentioned, the, the experiences is a fantastic way of, it. Be, uh, it's a more social experience. So unlike online, it's where you train in a, a bit more format. There's going to be form, there's format, but it's, it feels more exclusive, I would say. Yeah, I think, you know, Crikey, we were out all day, every day, doing hundreds, thousands of miles a month. And for us, it was a massive shock to the system or should have been a massive shock to the system. And actually what it's proven is we don't necessarily want to go back to that ourselves mm. as the networking leaders. Um, what we can achieve now is incredible. I would say our experience with the members, etc., is has been as good as it possibly could be, given the circumstances. But it would be nice to see people in person. It would, if we could. But we can't rely on it. And yeah. I think that's the key part of this, isn't it? And going back to the root, you know, the, the core question, why networking has to change forever? Well, because we're not going back to normal, mm -hmm. are we? You know, and, and we realise this. A very So we went through the process of, look, everyone, we're going to take you online because we're confident that it can provide a decent facsimile of what we were already doing in the online. It's better than a stopgap. We knew yeah. that because mm. a lot of the networking groups did it as a stopgap, made it free, and they were basically saying, well, it's, there's no value in it. We knew there was value mm. in it. So we, 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 we held fast to that idea. As it's evolved, we've realized, you know what? As a format, to mm. do the core bit of the networking, this is more efficient as long as you do your follow-ups and do the work after it. Um, the only bit that's missing is the chance to get together and meet in person, which if you do the, the core networking is taking place online, well, you've got more time. You can actually go to those experiences, those events and enjoy yourself. Well, that's what we talked about just before, um, before we started this recording was the, the simple fact of, I look at one networking event and look at the travel time, preparing to go to it, hanging around afterwards and talk, talking and then coming back. That's half a day. If you've got a team behind you in your business who can carry on doing the work while you're there, maybe not so much of an issue. Yeah. But for somebody like myself, I'm in the process of taking an apprentice, so maybe not an issue in the future. But I was a bit like, time is money. Yeah. But I knew the importance of networking, but with online, I can network well, every day if I want. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wherever you want yeah. to. And I think... We joke about me being a snob, but if I'm going somewhere, I want to enjoy it. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and we, this was very much part of the culture at the beginning to pick nice venues that if you're going out and you're spending money on an event, you want to be somewhere that's really nice, nice food, and it will naturally filter out and you'll find people similar views as you. So that's what it was always about. But even more so now, I mean, we, we've talked to quite a few members about, well, they want to go out if it returns. And there's a really mixed opinion. I'd say it's, Probably 50-50. Uh, yeah, and I'd agree. Mm. And, you know, even a couple of people have said, oh, gosh, when are you coming back? You know, we can't wait. And we've said, well, if it came back next week, would you come? Well, no, probably not, because my mum's really elderly and I've got to wait and see what happens. Yeah. I, don't, I, I thoroughly believe we won't get back to where we were until there's a vaccine. Yeah. So, like you guys have done, you've gone, right, 
online. Yeah. And when the, the time comes for it, the experiences, whether it's limited by number, but you've got to make sure that you're going along and experiencing something, not feeling like I can't go near someone. Yeah. You, it's, yeah. you know, it's got to be right for you as a business and for the members. Exactly and that. it's it'd be counterintuitive if I went along, let's say you're limited to 10 people and experience, I went along, but I wasn't allowed to go over and see that person because I've chosen the person that I'm allowed <laughs> to mix with. Mm. I'm going to think, well, actually, I'd much rather just stay online. It could end up being a glorified one-to-one in a room with more people. It could be. It, so, as, as it stands out. So you've got to wait to the time where it it will absolutely yeah. work. But by making the decision of going online exclusively, um, what was the term I used earlier on? Grabbing the ball. The, oh, God, Careful with this. That. <laughs> <laughs> the ball by its horns yeah. and making that decision, you then take away that whole, oh, what's going to happen? Let's see what's around the corner. Mm. Oh, wh- wh- where, where's it going to go? Face masks now, gloves next week, out in public. Yeah. Um, so well, I'll t- I tell you what the kicker to that is. Okay, let's assume that next month, so what are we in now? Mid-July 2020, for people listening to this later. Next month, there could be a, a, a larger lifting of restrictions so we could meet in groups of 20 to 30. So that happens. Great, let's spin up, let's go back to these meetings, let's go back to as it was before. What happens then the following month when there's a localised lockdown in one of our regions that we can't then go to that meeting? Well, we're going back to online again for that meeting. What happens if there's a second spike and a nationwide lockdown? We're going back to square one. This is the thing, isn't it? Why does networking have to change forever? You've got no choice. I mean, we've had this conversation, haven't we? What do you say to the person that says, I'm not networking until I can go back to my face-to-face meeting. What do you say to them? Well, we talk about this a lot in our education, about being bold and being confident in your product. Why are you waiting? I would imagine 90% of our members at least have done business with another member in those four months. So you're waiting to go back face-to-face to to see that person. When? When is that going to happen? If if I can wade in on this, I mean, majority of the, the members of only have their own businesses okay some of them may work for like larger corporates yeah um but when you start your business you've got to be willing to adapt you've got to roll with the punches with the lows and the highs and if you're waiting for something you've got to really question and i'm sorry if i offend anybody you've got a question why have you started your business if you aren't yeah. brave and if you don't adapt yeah. um i could easily say right i'm not doing any videography i'm not going out but i've adapted and i've got an online video editing service Mm. you can record your own videos and send them to me i'm doing more of this if i said no i'm not doing that i'm waiting to do some filming i'll be dead in the water being in limbo is worse than making a decision absolutely yeah and that's the key and i think Mm. you know as time's gone on we've we've said since march as soon as we know we'll let you know we still know literally no no more than we did just fed up being in limbo and you you want you want to take control so uh, it's like if and we know that there will be people within our network and that would might might have ordinarily joined that will say, if you take away the core bit being the meeting that I go and meet in person, that's not the network for me. And it's us, we've, we've talked a lot in the past about culture, values, what's right for us, what's right for certain people. That's fine. Mm. If it no longer provisions what you need, we're okay with that because, well, I'll tell you what, no one can provision what you need mm. and guarantee it for the next year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. But, (coughs) excuse me, there's also an interesting point about what is networking in the beginning? Why have we decided that, well, if I can't go and sit at my traditional breakfast venue and have my networking meeting, I'm no longer networking. What What is networking? Why can't you do that? Well, you're networking all the time. You pointed it out just now. As we were getting married, the guy that married us went, oh, what would you do for a living? And we told him, he went, oh, hold that thought, carried on with the ceremony, and now he's one of our clients. So you can do it wherever you are, is the point, but it needs to be efficient. I, I mean, I'd, I'd argue when I'm in a room, I'm not taking in everybody. I'll listen when they're talking. Of course I will, but there's so much other things going on. And we, we talk about Zoom fatigue, and we've all experienced that because we've been absolutely immersed in it. But that will pass because that has become the norm. And I'm sure we're all probably getting out the other side of it. It's normal. We probably reduced as much as we do. But when you are on a call, we did one this morning. I can pretty much picture where everybody was 
I could probably tell you what everybody does. Well, I can tell you what everybody does. Mm. And I've remembered it more because you've got to concentrate more when you're well, you, on, yeah, on a you, Zoom call. And, and you're, you, are, you are adapting. Yeah. You're, you're, you're brought, adapting. It's a human brain adapts to the situation, mainly because you don't have an alternative at the moment. Exactly. But, exactly but that's that. the answer to that question, isn't it? If you think that networking is just a formal networking meeting in person, you need to change your mentality yeah. about what networking is. We talk, don't we, quite a lot within only within some of the education about LinkedIn. Great example. Everyone wants to get better at LinkedIn. And we bang this drum a lot, don't we? LinkedIn is a networking tool. Yep. Most people are trying to use it as a free marketing platform. And it's not that. Mm. You're, you're a great example of this with your videos mm. that you've been publishing and giving people tips. But they are hotbeds of conversation. You're one of those people that now gets as many comments as you do likes. And for me, that's when you've cracked it because you've got true engagement and people are using your well, content. You're not, it, it's, it's exactly the same as you say. When you go networking, the naivety behind people who start networking is, I'm going to sell to the room. Yeah. And it's exactly what they do on LinkedIn. They put a post out. This is what I do. This is, this is great. Come to my website, buy my services. Absolutely wrong on LinkedIn. Yeah. Now, the algorithms on LinkedIn specifically... When you trend, it's because you're creating a conversation with your audience. It's something useful. So to me, it's a no-brainer putting out things to help, you know, mm. people with their phones to film. Yeah. Um, so it is absolutely spot on. Networking on LinkedIn is LinkedIn networking in online and it all cross relates. As cross-relates, long yeah. as you get that mindset for to build relationships, connections. And I think that and wanted to help people yeah. and not have an agenda behind it. You can always tell when somebody's got an agenda behind it. You can, you can, <laughs> yeah. And they stick out like a sore thumb, don't they? But I mean, we talk about being bold. What is the alternative? And quite frankly, if we don't change, the world will just change around us and our competition will catch up and they'll overtake. So, you know, there is no, no choice. We are people, people. We love meeting people, but that has been taken away to a degree. Mm. And rather than keep everybody in limbo it's a decision that has to be made it doesn't sit right with us does it to keep people hanging on any more no. than we want no, to hang on not. so we'll say okay what we're doing is as we've already done we'll develop online networking we'll add more services we'll open new regions so yeah. as a member every month probably there will be a new region that you can go and network at that you wouldn't ordinarily go to just before lockdown we were going to launch newcastle weren't we because we've got a great member and Ben Jury, the culture guy, is up there, and we've worked with Ben, and he was going to open Newcastle. Logistically, that's very hard to provision when you're in Hampshire. We were going to fly up there, fly, fly B, B, was it? Yeah. Went under the week before we flew. But, you know, there was a few of our members. I'll name check them because they'll love hearing their name. Pam and Jenny. <laughs> is anyone else going to come? Uh, not on that one, I think. Pam think and Jenny that. actually booked on their two members that were going to fly up to Newcastle to support us. That's going above and beyond. Yeah. Very but so. the idea is, well, the members can, well, you haven't even got to move, have you? But you can suddenly meet mm. a whole new pool of people. Glass half full rather than glass half empty. Mm. Let's let's look at the benefits of networking online. You're going to do the bit because you're going to reduce travel. So you're going to reduce your cost. You're helping reduce environmental impact. Mm. You're working more efficiently because you're not having to drop what you're doing. You can just fit this into your day. What else have we got? Um, you're safeguarding others, aren't you? Mm. Because regard irrespective of COVID or any other future pandemics and things like that, what you're basically doing is saying, well, I'm doing the right thing. I'm staying away. I'm, I'm reducing my potential exposure to a problem, which has got a knock-on effect for the people around you. There's all sorts of good reasons I, to do I, this, isn't it? literally just come up with my head another, another great reason is if you're on your computer, somebody like myself, and somebody says, well, what does that video look like? Yeah. Instantly show it. Yeah. yeah. In real world, you'd be like, oh, have a go with me. Um, I'll send you an email. You can change your backdrop. Yeah. Mm. You can brand it up. Yeah. You, you can do all sorts of things you can't do in the real world. So always look at the advantages of the, the digital world. And, Definitely. And what you get out of it versus the real world. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to look at the negatives. We had a new member recently who was literally, his background was rotating, showing the design work that he did. And I know he got a couple of one-to-one -one inquiries off of the back of that. So it's very easy to go, you know, and I, and I do get it. If you're a traditional networker, if you're used to that structure, if you're used to that format, it will be really hard. And, I, you know, I'm not unsympathetic to that. But what I would say is just try and you're probably not going to love it straight away. Of course you're not. 
because it is mm. very different but just persevere because eventually you can grow to really enjoy it and there's there's a lot of help out there because uh, what i've noticed from a, a a visual point of view is how people position themselves on the yeah. zoom calls or whatever video service you're using and it's, it's taken quite a while but they're almost all center on the screen yeah. and you can clearly see them and hear them. People have gone and bought, bought new tech to help with their communication and also upgraded their, obviously, their internet. So they've got better speeds, yeah. um, so the video shows better. And then your environment comes very, you know, um, the forefront. Yeah. So obviously, majority of us are working from a home office yeah. or in the lounge or sometimes I've spoken to somebody who's actually having a Zoom call with me in that en suite because that's the best place to get a signal. I wouldn't advocate that. Well, that, that's what they told you. <laughs> that's anyway. what, that's what they told me, but the yeah. echo was terrible. Um, so if you think about it from that point of view, you can get across more of your personality, your home life. I mean, you, you made a comment of my, my new Mac Pro in the background to yeah, everybody else. You had to else. mention that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to mention it. It's just expensive, but it looks like a cheese grater. Nobody's questioned it yet, except for if I'm on a call with James, he will actually say, it's a Mac Pro, <laughs> but you have things in the background which sort of solidifies you as a person, yeah. as a brand. Yeah. Well, may, you, there's no other situation you get that major advantage. We've definitely. Not. It's been a steep learning curve mm. for everyone, isn't it? But what we always come back to, and we did this from the early days of only, is oh, we talk about this in the context of behaviour in social media. What works or doesn't work in person is no different online. So I'll give you a classic yeah. example. We've all been on Zoom calls, either a networking event or a meeting where someone looks really bored and they're clearly not listening, <laughs> right? Think about that behavior. If you did that in person, what does that look like? Because people sort of forget that you are visible the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I've seen the difference. We've had visitors that have come on that have sent there. And sometimes you don't, it is difficult to look in one, at one point continuously and maintain your composure and look interested. I do get that. But the people that try and smile and show that they are paying attention and nod of a head speaks volumes because are you going to want to talk to the person that just spends the whole time like that? No. because Or all the people who decide to switch off their video because they're taking a call. Yeah. So yeah. you're not actually investing in you know, meeting people in the network. Well, they're telling there's, you, there's, there's I'm, I'm here to... to tell you what I want to tell you and I'm not really interested in any of you lot after this point. But there's always going to be an element of that, isn't there? Yeah. You know, and if that's the way you network, you have to accept that you're possibly not going to get as much out of it as somebody who is completely engaged. But um, I was just thinking of an example yesterday and, and another point of looking at the glass half full. Um, lady in Winchester opening a new spa. It opened up on Monday. So she joined us from the spa on a mobile she wouldn't have been able to get to the meeting because no. she would have had to have been at the spa yeah. because, of course, the business has been shut for four months. Great. She could show us. She was in the spa. One of the other members had you done do, the decor. You could do a walk around, exactly. depending on how good your Wi-Fi is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the interior designers on the call had done the decor, so we got to see her work. You know, it's it, as you were saying, that whole environment... I, I showed a picture that we had behind us one day. We'd had the living room done. So I showed the, the wallpaper. One of the um, the supplier of the wallpaper is a member. The lady who did the decor is a member. There's a graphic designer who did our print on the wall. He's a member. So I could show all of those things. I've talked about it before. Mm. But to show is incredible. And you can see the light bulb moment. And the pens get picked up, don't they? And they start writing Everyone down. Everyone looks down and they're making a note. Yeah. I, I'm just curious about what they're making a note of most of the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't talk to that person. <laughs> Yeah. There's loads of examples, isn't there, history? And there's a lot of well-worn examples like Blockbuster kind of lived in denial for a long time and Netflix took them over and now they're out of business. The music business got slaughtered by Apple bringing out iTunes yeah. and iPods and things like that. Um, go back even further. You know, someone invented the car and the people that were selling horses and blacksmith services <laughs> bemoaned it and wanted it to go back. We're not going back. And I think that's the key thing that we've mm. got to take away from this whether you want to portray it as being where you can either be optimistic and positive and find the good you've got no choice mm. it isn't going back to the old way of doing it therefore well look at the numbers i picked up i think it was may 2020 50 percent of the workforce according to the office of national statistics working from home i don't think that's going to drastically change mm. people don't want to commute anymore. They, the realisation is you can work really effectively at home. In fact, 
for many people, and we discovered this years ago, didn't we? Yeah. When you go to an office, you're wasting a lot of time a lot of the time anyway. If you're not disciplined, yes, and I get that you don't get the atmosphere, etc., but you can work effectively at home. So if you're waiting for the point where everyone goes back to the office and they're using the same shops and the coffee shops by the offices and office rent stays there, it's not going to happen. So what are you going to do? Are you going to moan about the good old days or are you going to adapt? Because what I'm seeing, 50% of the workforce that's sat at home would love something through their letterbox, are going to be looking at subscription boxes, are going to be looking at services that help them stay connected mm. while they're working from home. Focus on that, not what we've lost. And that's very much why we've made this move, yeah. isn't it? Because we just think, yeah, we can't give people necessarily what they want so we'll just give you a better version and we'll help you embrace the future of networking not hark back to an era that we're probably never going to go back to no and i think um i think we've mentioned it a couple of times look at the glass which is half full yeah, yeah. and all the advantages yeah it offers yeah i think so uh, amazing so there we have it that's the only podcast we hope you've enjoyed listening to what we're planning, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and hopefully learning a little bit about what only is and saying hello to the team. It's been lovely to sit with you two. Lovely. I, I still feel like I've been interview, in, interviewing you both, but great podcast. Really well, you've done it. a shoddy job. I don't feel like you've asked me anything. <laughs> I don't want to ask you anything. That's enough for me today. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. We'll Thank see you Andy. on the next episode of The Only Podcast.